Slow, slow beauty. And only to this silence, this current of silence of our shared being. And no matter which pathway we take, so to speak, or how we combine them, They all essentially help us to simply rest. In our being to abide as our self. To abide in the true I. of loving awareness, of pure consciousness. So deepening in understanding, deepening in love, deepening in beauty, are all ways to deepen in our being, to establish ourselves, so to speak, in our true nature. That, of course, is always full and whole and complete in the background, so to speak, but this old grip, this stickiness of this separate me is pretending that it's not. In theory, one glimpse of understanding, one glimpse of true love, one glimpse of being struck by beauty and awe is enough with the, the, the glimpse, the dip into our being is complete, is timeless in that moment. It's a timeless experience of our eternity, of our infinity, if we want to call it experience. Of course, it's not an experience that is made by the body and the mind. It's a non-phenomenal experience, a luminous experience. In theory, this shall be enough to never again hold on to those old ideas of the separate me, to never again to hold on to these painful feelings of me, of the separate me. But for most of us, the experience is different. It's sticky, this separate me. Grabs us over and over again, convincingly pretending to be me. It's 
so satsang. Emerging myself over and over again in understanding and truth, in love through the experience of our shared being. This kind of wearing down this stickiness of this separate me and gives me like a dose of understanding, of remembering that I'm okay, that everything is okay, that this separate me, feelings and thoughts are just fantasy. I know there are these beautiful stories of these enlightened masters, one glimpse and forever after, never ever did they experience a forgetting, a holding on to the separate me again. And that might be so, but it seems to be very, very, very rare. It's certainly not my own experience that I'm sharing with you. And I actually don't know anyone for whom it was in that way. Usually, the glimpses are very, can be very powerful or very subtle. It doesn't matter in the end. What matters is that nothing of this holding on to this old illusory me remains. We could get very frustrated again if we think that we don't get it. It's like, oh man, I understood. I know, I, I felt it. I, I'm not separate. I know it's true. Deep down in my heart, there's no reason to push anything away or to grab anything. And especially not my old separate me. Why would I hold on to that when I understand that it just brings troubles and misery and problems to my life? And still... I'm doing it, possibly. For the vast majority of truth lovers, truth seekers, it's like that. We apparently forget again, and there might be a moment where the drama of the separate me convinces us again that it's all very serious, very dramatic. Essential for my survival, for my happiness. The art, like in the little meditation in the beginning, is to allow those feelings and thoughts really equally to also be there. To release that hold and just let me be stupid again a bit. Why not? Let me be a bit ignorant again. It's okay. We've been practicing for a long time to experience life, to 
move through life based on this idea that I am exclusively this body-mind. So this hardwired ignorance in most cases has a strong momentum and needs to be dissolved in understanding, in love, in beauty over and over again. No hard feelings, friends. And all those three pathways, so to speak, I, I let them out yesterday of our little satsang with Laura. They are, for me, equally valid, so to speak. We have different, different avatars, different minds, different, we're functioning differently and, and not everything has to, has to be dissolved in, unknotting the knots of ignorance in the mind and understanding the paths of jnana yoga for many of us it's a it's a very valid path and it's it's one that is almost i would say essential as a, in the mix this is what we're doing in satsang but equally go out and do what you love what brings love to you what brings joy to you where where some open up and release the hold when they see animals you know, or get in touch with, with our parents or siblings or partners, all of that, everything which dissolves this tightness, this holding on is, is a very powerful way to dive into or through beauty, which must mean only to try to see beauty in the world, but all forms of arts, of creativity, of writing, of painting, of dancing, all of that that has potentially the power to let me forget and let go of this separate me. A good mix of all of that that matches my passion, my joy, my happiness, that I, that what comes naturally to me, I don't have to force myself to let go. Like our satsang, our meeting, it, it should be a, hopefully a, a joyful coming together, not something where we're trying very hard to become something or understand something. Gosh, no. Of course, we have to keep in check a bit those old habits, this old momentum that might drive us out of fear, out of lack into some activities, some habits that we actually know that are not really in line with my heart, some old 
ways of seeing and acting in the world they will be there so like we navigate with intelligence but softly gently and sometimes we push it maybe too far we we fall back for an old habit and i don't know mess up our mind by watching all night i don't know some series or so or drink too much or sleep too much or too little or whatever it happens this all i can say from my own experience it, if the if the wish the intention in the heart is real is pure is the wish to to let go of my separate self so to speak of that old habit the wish to be free if it's if it's authentic and real in my heart and then mo moments of forgetting moments of pushing it too far in the old direction it will happen it happened to me certainly and and it, i guess it happens to everyone to, to try too hard is usually not the way but also not to give in too little than to those okay then it's a fine art if we just listen to the old thoughts and feelings then we end up just i don't know feeding habits that are not really conductive to resting without that grip and and we know that intuitively mostly So we just follow our wisdom and then we, okay, then we know, okay, that wasn't the smartest move maybe. And then we let that go too. However, I would say as a conclusion a bit also to our talk that we had yesterday, Laura and I, contemplating it with you together now, again. As we were given a brain, a mind, so to speak, as we were given the quality of understanding to use thought, higher reasoning, satsang, to use the thorn, to remove the thorns of ignorance, of wrong thinking, of false beliefs based on the idea of being a separate me. For most of us, it should be at least a crucial part of the mix. Without understanding, without dismantling the wrong beliefs, the wrong thinking, it will be 
more difficult at least to remain in this knowingly being this loving awareness consciousness We've seen great artists that have in creating art have found probably beautiful insights, deep remembering, deep glimpses. And, and through that creative process, then bringing those also into into our world, like this cathedral or this cross from Michelangelo that I saw there. Um. Experiencing real love as a parent, as a partner, or even towards an animal might bring deep, authentic glimpses of our unity, so to speak. But often, it won't become quite clear, it won't quite stay firm. We might, will still have this belief of having it and losing it, so we paint more, we, we go traveling more, try to see more beautiful places. We, we love more and more partners, maybe, trying to find it over and over again in a, this moment this, that often is there in the beginning when it's not loaded with objectifying my partner as a as a thing when it's still fresh and I can intuitively see my partner as what I am and feel that as love. But then it wears out because the old habit through confusion, through ignorance comes back and then, okay, new partner, new relationship. So it seems, and there is no dogma, because there is absolute freedom in us and consciousness. There is no way. This is the way. Otherwise, we would limit the freedom and consciousness to veil itself and to reveal itself to itself again. But it seems for us who got this human brain and this function of, of thinking and higher reasoning, it seems to be a very helpful, essential part of the mix, if not a crucial part of the mix, to make this glimpse last through understanding.
It's like three different streams, three rivers of truth, love, and beauty streaming back to the ocean of silence. No matter which stream we follow, so to speak, in the end, they all lead to this one ocean. And once merged with that ocean, we realize that it's been always the same water. I've been always very cautious if someone was very convincingly believing that this is the way and this is the only way to come to the ocean, to this lasting happiness or freedom. How do we say all always lead to Rome? The way is not so important. Important is that we meet back in the ocean. Go back to the ocean for the swim how we used to do once a week with Ramdas to rediscover our happiness. And it seems that's my experience. And also as more I kind of give myself to this sharing or teaching, meeting people, even before I've been doing it officially for many years, meeting people all around the world, having a tea, a chai here, a coffee there. This mix of the different pathways that are kind of all usually in a different variety happening in the same time. It's kind of written, already written in our hearts if we follow our own joy, our little voice of breaking free of, 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 of our limitations, daring to go one step out of our comfort zone because there is this little voice just asking us to go here or there or paint this or do that or meet this person. Or little things usually, not big visions of me being this and that in the future. The little, the little steps. Where's the joy? Where's the love? Where's the beauty? What's calling me? Our heart usually knows very well. Oh. 
how to get to the ocean.